Thank you. And Ms. Julie Gillette will be the timekeeper. Uh, Mr. Randy Ruger, do you proceed with the complaint? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to share this with you today. Miss Debbie H. Brown is subject to ARP Article 10, Section 1A due to her conduct as, vice, as District 34 Vice Chair in 2012. Ms. Brown today is the District 30 Bonus Vote on the Central Committee as well as the ARP Vice Chair elect. I will provide evidence that Ms. Brown directed District 34 to improperly disperse its district treasury without regard to Article 9, Section 7B. Further, that then divided funds, rather than divide the funds between the districts as directed, she gathered support from some District 34 officers to convert the District 34 funds to gas cards for her future district use. Not only were there no minutes of this meeting, Ms. Brown did not hold the pre -pre -pre a pre-presidential preference poll meeting at all, nor were there any minutes of a series of suggested prior to the PPP preference poll phone calls. The APOC has received a March 9th, 2012 <coughs> statement reporting the conversion of the District 34 balance to gas cards. Recall the preference poll was on March the 6th. So uh, comments addressing the fact that this was done well before, before are materially not correct. District 34 was the only district which did not conform to the redistricting fund distribution rules. Secondly, District 34, under Ms. Brown's guidance, did not provide any proper APOC reports to the RPA Treasurer. We, I will provide evidence that Ms. Brown changed her position repeatedly when, when her facts were challenged during the investigation of this matter after her election as a ARP Vice Chair. The handling of funds and facts poses severe concerns for Ms. Brown's management of the ARP business as vice chair and potentially as ARP chair. Thank you. Um, um, note for the record that uh, the help is distributing information of uh, both Randy and also the supporting information. Um, who's on the from, uh, Who's on the from, from District 34. Ms. Brown, at this time, Ms. Brown, Brown, if you would like to come oh, forward and present share. your three minute you introduction. Mr. Chairman, Ms. Sally, Ms. Ms. Brown is asked to appear with counsel. If she'll have me, I will enter my appearance with her counsel for this hearing. Okay. And uh, under the rules, counsel is allowed to speak on her behalf. Okay. So I would request permission to do so. I think you're correct. Point of order. Granted. Granted and yes. granted. Mr. Shattuck? Yes. Uh, and, and the individual that will be speaking as an attorney is who? Hi. Please identify yourself. Yeah, Wayne Anthony Ross, former national committee man, worker for this party for so 50 that years. Wayne Ross needs to act as an attorney, a license, and should he be proving that to the Kennedy committee no. before he acts as an attorney in this capacity? <laughs> I, I don't, I, I, in this case, I don't think that is necessary. <laughs> I, I probably an attorney before you were born. Okay, with, with that yeah. information, <laughs> uh, I will make sure that uh, Mr. Gillette, the Assistant Secretary, is keeping time and allow Mr. Ross to proceed with three minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Ready? Okay. There are due process issues 
as a result of the actions of this party, this committee. First of all, the removal article of the rules of the Republican Party apply only to any person holding elected office. Russ Millett and De Debbie Brown do not start their elected offices until February 1st. They are appointed by the ARP rule to the State Finance Committee, which is not elected in office. Second, there has not been sufficient time for preparation. She has the right to have an attorney. She hasn't consulted with an attorney. I'm volunteering here. Third, there's no communication regarding the procedures for the hearing until she was presented with the procedures today. Fourth, we would insist that Witnesses take an oath before testifying. <coughs> Mr. Reedrich did not take an oath before testifying. We would ask that a court reporter be present to record the proceedings. And those submitting complaints have the burden of proof. There's been no witness list. You have a very limited time in which Ms. Brown can call witnesses. And uh, that doesn't comply with the rules which state, and I'll quote, and I just got them because I didn't expect to be here today. <laughs> there shall be a fair hearing. No person shall be removed without first being an opportunity for a fair hearing of the charges and a reasonable opportunity to reply. I submit the time allotted is not reasonable. Persons having charges brought against them have a right to have legal cross counsel present and should they do so, speak on their behalf. I'm allowed to speak, but she has not had enough time to consult with an attorney. Now we worked very hard for this party for a long time and what we're doing is shooting ourselves in the foot and it should stop. We're making a mockery out of what's going on here. We're depriving the people that appeared at the convention of their right to vote. We got charges filed against the chairman. He's worked very hard to make a good party. We got charges filed against the new chairman. Come on. Let's start acting like Republicans and let a bunch of loonies. <laughs> so I move to dismiss. <clears throat> Moving on, um, the, the I think the agenda has been accepted. I don't believe they can put a motion to dismiss that was a, at this time. Rule that out of out of order. But at this time, presentation of case, uh, the complainant's presentation, 15 minutes, and defendants cross-examination of those questions. So at this point, Mr. Rudrick, are you ready to prepare for the complaint presentation 15 minutes? I will do my utmost. And is Ms. Uh, okay for 15 minutes? Uh, please proceed, Mr. Rudrick. The ARP assisted all districts. Again, I requested that the Complainant be sworn if he's going to testify. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This is not point a court. Order. This, Mr. Shattuck, point of order. Is there a requirement in our rules that asks that a person in this in this format uh, swear uh, prior to giving any testimony? I will direct that question to Mr. Frank McQuarrie, the rules chair. <clears throat> There, there is not, and as a point of clarification, and this has been validated all the way to the Supreme Court, this is A, this is not the court of law, this is a political party that has certain rights inherent in its ability to conduct its business. Uh, that does include the ability to judge fitness and suitability of people that have been elected to office or are proposed to be elected to office. Uh, Compliments of the attorneys for Ron Paul recently, at the California. Don't uh, look at me uh, when you say that. No. <laughs> <laughs> look at me. Uh, <laughs> no. Point of order, Mr. Chairman, I would ask that if Mr. Ross is a guest, huh? that he act as a guest at this particular point in time. He knows the procedure, the process, and the way that we act. I would ask him to not 
not make a mockery of this system, please. He's a respectful okay. man, and I hope he would act respectful to this process. With, with that, let's uh, please move on to the agenda that the executive committee has approved for this evening, and we'll follow that process. And one more ways. matter. Motion. I have purpose of requesting sworn testimony is that there may be litigation as a result of this and we should be aware of that all of us as republicans and we shouldn't be Bring just order mr chairman yes i believe that is considered under alaska law close <coughs> to threatening and would probably have to be wrong and i was in that way <laughs> so we'll call a point of order and please ask mr ruger to proceed minutes. excuse me I'm a notary. I'm authorized to administer oaths. I would think it would be just simple to do it. Mm -hmm. Do you have any objections? I'm not averse to it, but because I plan to tell the truth. <laughs> that's, not, that's what I plan to tell. <laughs> Let's put something in front the of the body. The truth that I am aware of. So, if there's litigation, we just would not like to have as few issues as possible. I, I, as the rules chair, I want to clarify that we have consulted with the, one of the authors of Burke is on the phone. And Robert's Rules of Order, and he is on the phone. Uh, this is an entirely appropriate process. This is not a court of law. It's more equivalent to a board of directors of a corporation. We are a private entity. We are a legal entity, and we have certain guaranteed rights. We don't, in a, in a board situation, people are not asked to, to be sworn in. I don't know if this would be a great group that has no objection, but I don't want us to get wrapped around the axle on a bunch of appropriate objections to the courtroom that are totally inappropriate here. This is, and, 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 and I think uh, Mr. Shattuck is right, uh, Wayne fully understands how we operate and the legal basis for that. This is not a court of law. This is the executive committee of the Republican Party which is trying to accomplish its business in an efficient and respectful manner. Anything that happens here is subject to appeal to the Central Committee, uh, and I'm sure any actions here that anybody's unhappy with will be appealed, whichever side for this. So, uh, if Mr. Bulge would like to make a comment, I would invite him to do so. Let, let's get Burke first. Uh, Mr. Bulge. that information put forward, I will address Ms. Uh, Debbie Jocelyn, uh, a SEC member. And our National Committee. Our National Committee, I'm sorry. I just want to be brief. Um, I would just like to say that it's been said that we want to be respectful, and I agree with that. And I would ask Mr. Shattuck to pull it back a notch or two. Mr. Ross is our former National Committee man. He's here, and if you don't agree with something he says, that doesn't mean we have to bite his head off. We all need to treat each other with civility and with respect. That's all. Thank you, Ms. So with that being said, to the chair point of order, just want to clarify the time. Is there, are I, you down I to five stopped, minutes I now? Stopped, no, no, okay. I stopped. He has so, 13 minutes. For the <coughs> proceeding with, with the orders of, this, of the evening approved by the SEC, uh, Mr. Randy Ruder, would you proceed with your 15 minutes of complaints presentation? We'll follow up in five minutes by the defendant's cross-examination of your testimony. Thank you. <clears throat> During the redistricting process, the ARP assisted all districts in allocating existing funds to new districts as required by the rules. Dist District 34 did not have any visible records, and when we checked with APOC, they had reported two zero-activity reports in, two, in 2010 and 2011. The APOC investigation produced the recovery of an accurate report finally on December the 28th of this year. 
APOC yesterday issued a fine which is attached in your package, a notice of penalty, 